Hello everybody, welcome back to Adobe Live. I am Spencer Nugent. Last time I covered the concept of lines and how to use them in design. In today's video, I'm going to take you through applying these principles to my own poster design. Now, as you can see here, I've completed some rough sketches and placed inside the Adobe Illustrator file. Last time I did have a few shapes that I had created and now we can paste them into our active file. My underlying sketch here is red, however, so I'm now going to switch my line color to black. After you've imported your file, it's important to make sure that the PNG file or JPEG is locked. Take these shapes that we created initially, and now I'm going to scale them to where they're very close in size to what I finally want. To create the fingers on the hand, I'm going to use a little trick. With the line tool selected, I'm going to click and draw a line on top of the letter A here, and this is going to make sure that these lines are collinear or parallel. The reason I want to do that is so that in my illustration, these fingers are aligned with my sketch that I created. To continue this trick, I'm gonna go over to my stroke panel here, and in my stroke panel, I'm going to select round cap and round join. This is going to give my stroke here a rounded end. Now I can increase the stroke weight until we are roughly the width of one of these fingers. Hold Alt on the keyboard, click and drag, I can duplicate these fingers. In the menu, select object, path outline stroke you'll see that this line segment is now a shape hit d on the keyboard so i have an outline and the white inside for this shape now i could repeat this step for each of the line segments and simply duplicate our line segment here now i've selected all these shapes i'm going to scale them and position them so that they are in line with that leg segment I also have to create a thumb and to do that I'm going to use the pen tool. Now I could do a whole series on the pen tool but I'm going to encourage you to tap into Adobe's resources either here on Adobe Live or in the knowledge base to get a better understanding of how to use the pen tool. With the pen tool selected I'm going to click one point here and drag to create a control arm for this anchor point and then click to where I now have a curve defining the shape of what will be the thumb. Hit escape and now we can deal with the appearance of this stroke. Do the same thing that I did by selecting a rounded cap and adjusting the line weight. This allows me to create a quick appearance for a thumb without having to actually draw an outline shape. Outline stroke and I now have a shape and I can select these other paths as well. Select these fingers and hit control G on the keyboard. Now they are a group and if I want to bring these to the front of my illustration, hit command shift right bracket these paths now move to the top layer within the layer let's go ahead and put some paths in place for the head the hat and other elements that might be a part of this letter a jump to the direct select tool select an anchor point and if you hold alt with the pen tool you can click on this anchor point and drag and now modify how this anchor point shows up we can also select an anchor point and rotate the control arm here. To make something symmetrical in Illustrator, this is how I do it. I like to cut this path in half, delete one half of the path and select the reflect tool. And now if I select Alt on the keyboard and drag, I have another half of my shape. And now I need to join these together. And this is an opportunity to introduce a wonderful tool in Illustrator called Shape Builder. Shape Builder is available here on the toolbar. We click on Shape Builder. And now with these two shapes selected, I simply just click and drag across both and Shape Builder will combine them into one shape. This is a fast and easy process to either combine or remove parts of overlapping shapes. The ear of my character looks something like a circle. I can drag this over and position it and duplicate on the other side. It's always a good idea if you're using some sort of reference illustration just to check to make sure you're being consistent with the look and feel. And I think I'm getting close to that vibe that I had in my original illustration, at least with the line so far. To duplicate the ear, select the reflect tool, pick our anchor point like we did before, click and drag, and now we have another copy. To work on the eyes, use the pen tool, click one, two at the second point, drag a little bit, and then at the third point, simply click and now hit escape or switch to the direct select tool and now we have our path activated just like we did with the ears reflect the shape for the other eye for the mouth use an ellipse we can use the scissor or cut tool that's c on the keyboard delete the top half and now complete the shape with a few clicks and now you can see i'm a bit closer to this rough sketch while trying to approximate the style that i had in the original sketch sometimes when you're illustrating you might want to change things from your rough sketch to your final illustration in this case 
case, I don't really like the top hat and I want to put a beanie on this character. Start by drawing a rectangle here, just across the letter A, roughly at the position of the head. Select the pencil tool that is the sixth icon down. With the pencil tool selected, I can simply draw on the screen to get the beanie shape that I want. And now I have a closed path that is a rough shape of a beanie for this character. One of the cool things with the pencil tool is you can draw again and modify that path. So all you have to do is start on the original path, draw the correction that you want, and then finish where the path would continue on the other side. You can even use the pencil tool to modify other paths that you've drawn before. So this rectangle here, if I just click and draw on one side like that, I now have a more organic shape for this beanie and we're getting very close. Now that I have these overlapping shapes, I need to create the sleeves, take the pen tool and create another overlapping shape. I can also go ahead and duplicate this ellipse because I have the same curve here and maybe make this just a little bit wider. Create a shape around the foot here and with my overlap in place, I can now use the shape builder tool. This part is going to take a little bit of focus if you are doing something very similar to what I'm doing. To show you how to use shape builder, I have these shapes here. When I hover over this intersected part, I can select any one of these and it will create a new path for me. For example, if I click on this pink section here, I now have a new path that I can just click and drag away. If I want to now take this pink section and add it to this purple section, all I have to do is select these two and with shape builder, click and drag over both of these, but they become highlighted. And now when I release, they are one shape. So on our illustration, simply select this rectangle shape that I drew and then this arm of the letter A. With these two selected and shape builder selected, I can now simply click right here and now I have a shape here on the inside that is the resultant shape. We can do the same thing with the foot of my character here. I want to preserve this semicircle, so click and now I have a region that I can use and we can go ahead and delete the rest. I'm going to add some line weight to this as well as clean up a little bit more using the shape builder tool. All right, we're getting really close now. I may want to do a few things like add some lines between the fingers. I can also use the pen tool here, reflect the lines to the other side and now I have the same look on both sides of my character. I'm going to apply a general line weight to everything. One way to do this is use the Pathfinder tool. To access the Pathfinder tool, just go to Window, Pathfinder, and I have this option to unite or join all these paths that are selected into one path. Now you don't want to click that right away. What you want to do is copy the paths that are active, then click Unite, and now I have an outline shape, and if you hit command B that's going to paste what was selected before that we copied behind all of this new path. Selecting the outline I can now enhance the line weight and what's cool in Illustrator is I can even have the line weight aligned to the outside. For the simplified shoe here I'm just going to add a line across like so and we can duplicate that over to the right as well. This will take a little bit of time so I'm going to speed up the process and show you how I work through this myself. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us here on Adobe Live. I had fun and I hope you did as well. I'm easy to find on the internet. I am at sketchaday.com on Instagram and my website is www.sketchaday.com. Don't forget the dashes. Be sure to like and subscribe to Adobe Live so you don't miss all of the amazing content here. And I'll see you next time right here. Take care, everybody.